Hello everybody, it's Murray here and welcome back to my channel, I'm Stuart Paintings. On today's Sunset Beat Acrylic Painting Tutorial, we're going to paint this gorgeous pastel seascape. I'm going to teach you how to create a gorgeous underpainting that you can block in at home and then you can add the details such as clouds and waves over the top. I'm going to teach you how to paint a realistic wave coming up from the ocean onto your beach so you can paint this gorgeous seascape in acrylic paint. So let's get into it. So the tutorial is nice and easy, but you will need the following colours. They are white, yellow, orange, pink, green, purple, cerulean blue, cobalt blue and black. Now I have a 9 by 12 inch canvas that I painted burnt sienna. I've used chalk to create an outline and I've put my horizon right in the middle. And we're going to have a big wave coming up onto the shore from the ocean onto our beach. And we're going to create a lovely light effect. We're going to have some wet sand, some dark sand, and we're going to have some light coming here. And we're going to have lovely pastel tones shining from the right hand side and a bit cooler tones a bit bluey purples on the left hand side so if you'd like to jot down the outline feel free feel free to do so while well, i just use a dark cobalt blue color just to put an outline where i want my wave to be and we'll get started so the first thing i'm going to do is just take a load of white and i'm just going to block in with a big brush just where i want the light source i'm going to have the light coming from the right hand side so i'm just going to have a tiny bit of yellow lots and lots and lots of white and a dot of black to get this naples yellow and i'm just going to create this creamy yellow sort of color remember just a dot of black because black is very overpowering and like usual we're just blocking it in so don't worry if you have any streaks any of the burnt sienna shining through from the background because we are painting in pastel tones we're gonna have to give it maybe one or two coats so we're gonna just add some white and look sorry some white and a dot of purple and a dot of black just to make this lovely sort of lavender tone and we're going to add a little bit of that naples yellow to it just to get a cross between the cool tone and the warm tone of the naples yellow so by adding purple we're just making it a little bit cooler and we're just going to create a bridge tone between the two tones and that's just as the light source runs out as it moves towards the left hand side the sky gets a little bit cooler and to get more cooler we're just going to make some light blue which is cerulean blue cobalt blue lots and lots and lots of white and a dot of black and you should get this light blue here and all you have to do is just add a little bit more blue and purple just to get a little bit darker shade so just add plenty of white and a little bit of blue and purple and you should get a dark shade just into that far corner so as I say, don't worry if it's streaky, don't worry if it's messy, we are just blocking it in. So we're going to try to mirror the sky on the water below. So what we're going to do is just create the same tones on the water below. But we still want to make the right hand side a lot more warmer and a lot more pastel, so using whites and yellows. And we'll get darker and cooler as we move towards the left hand side. So we're trying to follow the light on the right hand side and move across over to the left hand side. So as I say, acrylics always dry darker. They always dry very streaky because they're water based. So don't worry while we're blocking it in if you're finding it a bit of a struggle. We just want to cover up all the burnt sienna and then we'll, I'll slow down the video and we'll go a bit slower and we'll go through all the colors. So all I did there was just add some of that purpley tone. And then just as we move across, we're just getting more of that blue tone so all it is is cerulean blue, cobalt blue, lots and lots and lots of white and a dot of black. And you should get this lovely light blue. And then all you have to do is just block in this far corner on the left because this is getting less sunlight. So it's just going to be a little bit cooler in tone. It all looks like a bit of a puddle, a bit murky, but don't worry because once we go over it, as I say, acrylics always dry a bit darker. They always dry very streaky. So once we go over the top, the paint will sort of cling to the second layer of paint. Watch, see, look how much brighter it looks now just by going over the top. So all I'm doing is just using some white and I'm just going to make a pastel tone by adding a tiny bit of yellow. So just a tiny bit of yellow. So watch, tiny bit of yellow, lots and lots and lots of white. And you should get this tone here, 
which is just an off-white and that's a really good tone just to have a glow around your sun so we don't want to actually paint the sun today we're just going to have a light source we're just going to have a blur where it is and we're just going to have more yellow to the mix look watch just more yellow there we go just make it a bit more lemony and we're just still very creamy yellow and we're just going to get darker in tone just as we get further away from the light source so as I say the reason I paint my canvas burnt sienna is for this exact reason you can see streaks in the painting you can see it from the canvas when you are painting in pastel tones like I am now look you can see it's a struggle sometimes sometimes you get streaks with acrylic acrylic paints and you get really horrible sort of brush marks and you can see some bits of thick and some bits of thinning in texture and it's really annoying so sometimes if you paint in burnt sienna or a dark tone underneath you can pick that up really easily sometimes if you're painting on a white canvas you might not notice that so all i'm doing is mixing some of that purple lots and lots of white and a dot of black into that yellow and I'm just bridging the two tones together to look as I say with acrylics I think it's easy if I just swap to a big brush and throw the paint on so I'm just going to fast forward it while I'm doing it but you can see look even with a second coat you are going to get streaks because they it's such a pastel color sometimes with acrylic paints even on a white canvas you will get streaks so don't worry about that that is very very normal unlike oil paints acrylics are water-based so they're very thin in unless you're using a lot a lot of paint so if you have to give your work a bit of a blitz with a hairdryer and just dry it and just go over the top just to make the colors look brighter and just use a big chunky fat brush like I've got here we can do that so all I'm doing I'm just adding a little bit of yellow and white and I'm trying to add some heat to the horizon so all I'm doing is making the sky a bit more yellow at the base of the horizon we're going to add some clouds and stuff but all we want to do is we want to create sort of a light source with the white and we're just going to get darker in tone as we move away from it so if you mix some yellow and orange together you should get this lovely little tan color and if you just add a dot of black just a dot so more yellow than orange and a dot of black and lots of white you should get this lovely sort of goldeny yellow so it's just look yellow and orange and all we're going to do is it, as we get further away from the light source which is the sun we're just going to make the sky a little bit cooler now if you're like me and you get scratches or brush marks in your painting as i say just dry it with a hairdryer just go over the top that is so normal with acrylics i know in lots of tutorials and things people are just super fast you don't get to see what they do actually do so look just dry it with a hairdryer go over the top with the same paint tone and you will see how all those streaks should disappear so a little tip and trick for you so look all i'm doing is just a little bit more heat a little bit more yellow and just making the two tones blend together just by using a big brush so when you're happy with it please dry your work now the reason i'm asking you to dry is because we've been using a yellowy tone and we're going to make the sky just to be a bit cooler in tone so we want to make it a little bit darker and we're going to use blue now the reason i want you to dry your canvas is because blue and yellow together will create green and we don't want that so what we're going to do is just get some purple lots and lots of white and some of that light blue which was cerulean blue cobalt blue lots of white and a dot of black so more white than anything so more white than anything and a tiny bit of blue and just a dot of black so all we're doing look we're getting more cooler as we move towards the left hand corner so just by adding more blue as we get over all I was doing was just add a little bit of purple and white to the mix to get that darker blue now on hindsight I think because acrylic paints always dry darker they're a bit naughty for that so look once they dry it looked way too dark so we can fix that so that's the great thing about acrylics we just blitz it with a hairdryer and we just make a lighter tone so let's just put a 
dot of purple and a dot of blue and just predominantly white so just off white and we're just going to merge that because as i say it will dry darker and light pastel tones always pick up the colors underneath so all we're doing we're just going to go over the top and just make it predominantly white with a dot of purple and a dot of blue just so it's a real seamless transition and then we're going to add our lightest blue we're just going to add that to the white so still predominantly white with a tiny bit more blue in it and just a little bit more blue into that left hand corner just to make it cooler so there we go so once it's dry what you can do is just get a blender brush and get some of the light paint of the light yellow tone and now it's completely dry and your canvas is completely dry it's just rub most of the paint off the dry brush and just where you've got a transition just go in between and just gently rub that brush and it will merge the two colors almost seamlessly and you'll have a seamless transition so I know the skies, this part, the blocking in and the transitions is the hardest part. All the other bits, the same with the water, are a lot more easier. So if you dry your canvas and if you use painting tape and you measure a straight horizon in the middle of your canvas, we're going to paint some clouds now. So all the hard bits done, the transitions is the hardest bit. So we're going to paint a lovely cloud line on our horizon now. So we're going to get some purple. And we're going to mix it into lots and lots of white and a tiny bit of pink just to heaten it up so purple pink and lots and lots and lots of white we should get a lovely tone so more white because as i say acrylic paints always dry dark so what we want to do we want to really create a lovely pastel sunset we want our sunset beach to look really pastel in tone so it's better to always add more white and go really really light and if it dries a little bit too dark so i think that's all right no i think it's a bit too dark so this is what i'm saying to you it can be deceiving when you put it on your canvas so look by just adding a little bit more white there we go we still want it to be very pastel in tone we want it to be really nice this painting so by just adding a little bit of pink we're just going to heat it up a bit because around the sun's going to have more heat so how we add heat we just use warm tones so we're going to add a tiny bit of pink a tiny bit of orange and we're just going to make around the sun a little bit warmer and just on the edges of our clouds just a little bit warmer with that pink lovely pastel tone and then while we've got that tone we're going to go up and we're going to start creating the clouds so as i say the blending of the transition is so important because when you do this easy bit by making all the shapes for the cloud the transition in the underpainting is the thing that tricks your eye so i know it takes a long time to do but it's the easiest thing to trick the eye because when you put the details on top such as waves and clouds it's so much easier because the transition behind it in the background so if you think with painting we always start from the back and we work our way towards the viewer so if you think of the sky as the furthest thing back and we're walking towards the viewer now to remember to make that golden color it was just yellow a dot of orange and a dot of black so yellow dot of orange and a dot of black but predominantly yellow and what we're going to do is just add a lot of white to that mix and tiny bit of pink and we're just going to heaten up this area but it's still really pastel it's hardly any color in it it's got more white than anything so as i say acrylic paints always dry darker so if you do make a boo-boo and you do it too dark no worries just dry it with your hair dryer and just go over it with a lighter tone so that's the wonderful thing about acrylic paints they're so easy they're perfect for beginners a lot of people always ask me how to paint in acrylic paints and how to paint certain things well it's just patience and i'd say invest in a hairdryer i have no hair <laughs> so i use my wife's lovely hairdryer which she's never too happy about but you know when you're married sharing is caring <laughs> so look, all i'm doing is using a little bit more pink and orange tone just as we move towards the light source just to make it more warmer i'm just creating some of these floaty clouds 
just off the horizon. So super easy technique. Because we've got that lovely blend in the light of the transition, it's beginning to trick the viewer's eyes. And because the colors match with the darker tones towards the left-hand side and the lighter tones to the right, let's just have some highlights here. We'll put on some detail in a little bit. But we're just gonna match the tones and it should look really pretty already. And just while it's dry now, I'm just going to get some white and I'm just going to blur that into that area just to make it look like the heat source. So look, let's move, remove our tape and we've got a lovely straight horizon. We've got a perfect, lovely pastel sky. Let's dry it so we don't put the tape over wet paint. So make sure your um, horizon is nice and dry and just attach your paint again. And we're going to do the water. So just like the sky, we're going to try and mirror the tones, these lovely pastel tones in the water. So do you remember it was yellow and just a tiny, sorry, it was white, predominantly white and a tiny bit of yellow. So predominantly white and a little bit of yellow and we're going to create this really bright tone. Okay, and we're going to get cooler in tone as we move across to the left hand side. So all we're going to do is block in with our big brush, go right up to the tape so you get a lovely straight horizon. So we've got that lovely tone and all we're going to do, we're going to get lots and lots of white and we're going to get a dot of pink. So just a dot, so predominantly white and a dot of pink and a dot of light blue. So more white than anything, a dot of light blue and a dot of pink. And we should get just a little bit cooler tone, but still very pink. And we're just, with our big brush, just gonna merge that into that lovely yellowy white that we had previously. But as you can see, as it dries, it dries a little bit darker. And then all I'm gonna do, look, I'm just reapplying the paint, I'm just, trying to get some of the streaks out as it's drying so that's this thing as I say acrylics are streaky <laughs> so look and then we're gonna get even cooler so what we're gonna do still plenty of white but now no pink no yellow just blue so lots and lots and lots of white and a dot of light blue and all we're gonna do is just merge that into that previous pinky tone so look as we're getting more to the left we're getting cooler in tone and then lastly we're just going to use light blue completely so we're just going to fill that left hand corner into light blue so just as i say a big brush is perfect for that i don't use expensive brushes if anyone would like any recommendations for the equipment i use in the videos i've done a link in the description box below but i don't actually use expensive brushes i'm not one of these people um, who's very I don't know anal about their brushes I just use cheap and cheerful brushes because I go through so many so all I'm gonna do look because it's got a lot of streaks in it I'm just gonna fast forward the video but all I'm gonna do is just give it a second coat so all I'm doing is just using a big round-headed cheap brush as I say it's nothing special just very soft in bristle you can buy I say a pack of multi-size brushes with lots of big round-headed ones and flat brushes for about 10 pounds or um, ten dollars I guess so they're not expensive so as they say it's just white and dot of pink and dot of blue and we're just going to try and make the seamless transition so just like the sky as I say blending is the hardest thing once you learn blending all your things like your drawing and your detail and stuff will come but once you learn the blending trying to get your transitions seamless with my proper work, I do this for hours. As I say, I'm doing these tutorials in, what, 45 minutes? My proper work probably takes me a day or so because I try to go completely photorealistic. So with things like the tutorials, they are great fun for me and it's great for, to teach you guys, but you can go more detailed. But learning to blend is a key skill if with painting with acrylics because it's really, really good to trick the viewer's eyes. And when you add the detail on top, it will look seamless. So look, that looks so much nicer just from taking two minutes more just to blend it once it was dry. 
So if you remove your tape, you should have a gorgeous straight horizon and a perfectly blended sea now, which is absolutely great. And we're going to create the waves. Now, excuse me if you hear any rain in the background. It is torrential rain here in London. So unlike this gorgeous sunny beach, it's very wet here. <laughs> it's not how it's not how picturesque like this scene. So we're going to make a dark wave. So we're going to create indigo, which is black. A little bit of green, lots of blue. So indigo is black, a little bit of green and lots of blue. OK, so we're going to create an indigo color and we're going to add a little bit more green to it. And we're going to add a little bit of cerulean blue, just a little bit and some purple just to make it more dark and musty. Purple is a great tone for that. And we're just going to add some black just to suck some of the color out and a little bit of cobalt blue just to darken it so a little bit more green so there we go a nice musty sort of sea tone so this is perfect for deep waves and we've got a flat heady brush and I'm just going to add a little bit of white just to make it a bit lighter in tone so if you load up your flat headed brush now the reason I'm using a flat headed brush is they're really straight because they're like a a flat headed screwdriver if you imagine that they're really really good for doing straight edges so look just like a straight edge really really easily because it's a big flat line so when you have to paint things like straight lines for things like waves it's excellent so all I'm doing look I'm coming down diagonally and I'm just trying to create the illusion of a wave so look I'm just creating sort of little curls I'm going to have little sort of shapes and what that is is if you think the water gets deeper and you get these dark shadows in the water from to represent the deeper aspects of the wave so we're just going to create that using this darker tone now just like our sky because we've done this gorgeous transition in our underpainting once we put all the shadows on using this darker tone it will trick the viewers eyes and rather than do loads of highlights and fiddly stuff so here I am just creating a ridge up to the beach just so I have a nice ridge between the wet sand and the actual wave itself and all the wash. Yep, so all I'm doing, look, I'm creating all dark tones. So as I say, just by using this darker tone, we don't need to, and using all the underpainting, we don't need to add loads of highlights afterwards. So look, all I'm doing is trying to create the illusion of waves using my flat brush. So I'm just creating little divots and they're all coming up to that wave. And then all I'm doing, look, I'm going across. So I'm going diagonally and some downwards. And I'm just using that dark tone and I'm just letting the paint run off my brush. So I've got barely any paint on my brush and I'm just creating the illusion of caps of waves onto our ocean water. So look, our waves and our ocean water is starting to look much more realistic. Now, as you go up towards the horizon, you want to let the paint come right off your brush so you don't have hardly any paint. So you've just got the impressions just pushed down with a dry brush, hardly any paint. And you want to get flatter waves as they move towards the horizon. So almost straight lines going across. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to darken up these. So these could be some big waves coming up like this one and that looks excellent so we're going to just add some of that light blue and we're just going to create some sea foam so as a wave comes up to our beach you get all the sort of wash and foam so because it's not much in the light but it's still in this lovely pastel sunset that we're creating we want all the tones to match so because of that we don't want to create a too dark a shadow so we're still going to use these tones so what we're going to do is we're going to mix the tones together so we've got the really light tone and the really dark tone and we're just going to mix an in-between tone and that we can use as a shadow so it's not too harsh it's not really dark but it's not really light and what that does again it emphasizes the really light light blue and makes that look like sea foam. So just by using a sort of medium tone from the really dark, deep aspects of the wave, and then using a medium tone, it just creates a less harsh shadow. And what we can do is we could use that for our foam as it comes up towards the beach, as our wave hits that wet sand. And cause we've got that lovely underpainting, look, 
the wet sand's already done. It's not like we have to add highlights or anything like that. It looks fantastic already because the underpainting, that light from the yellow, is tricking your eye. I'm just going to use that darker tone just to make emphasize this wave, just to give it a bit of shadow. Now remember I added two tutorials during the week on how to paint water um, close up. So I did how to paint realistic water. I've done a very easy version and a little bit harder version which has light in it. So if anyone would like to watch them they're available on my channel here. So we're going to use some of that indigo which was black, blue and green. And we're going to add a little bit of green and purple again to it and some cobalt blue and a dot of black. So black, blue, purple and green basically okay and we're going to make that dark shadow tone again and we're just going to emphasize our wave so as i say with the tutorials i'm trying to teach you how to paint water it's not hard it's just fiddly and once you know how to do the base coat the underpainting adding the detail on top is really really easy so as i say once you learn how to blend the tones and how to see the actual transition in the tones for the underpainting that's the trick and then once you learn that you can put all this detail like the shadows and the uh, little highlights if you want to put things like foam or anything so look all I'm doing is just using that dark tone just to emphasize our wave to make it look more 3d and just to emphasize the shadows just by using a darker tone and just emphasize the ridge of the water as it comes and peels back from our beach so our sunset and our wave is starting to take effect so look I'm just outlining the sea froth before we start building up the wave so we're going to mix the two tones together so we've got the light blue and we've got that darker tone and all I'm going to do is try to create a curve of a wave so how a wave sort of comes around like a barrel and again don't worry if you've got any burnt sienna shining through we can give it a second coat we start building it up so all i'm doing is just using a darker misty sort of blue a combination between our dark shadow tone and our light blue and i'm just trying to create the curvage of the wave think of a tube water is like a tube it comes around and it sort of curls around so we want to try to emphasize that so look, just be using that darker blue we're just trying to emphasize that into the shadow tone so as I say, don't worry if you have any burnt sienna where we've missed a little bit here. We'll just dry it and we'll go over it as it dries. We're just trying to build it up. What we're trying to do is just have, again, let's see, just go over the top, just with the same tones and just a lighter blue. And we're just going to put a little bit of highlights over the top. So all I'm doing is using the lighter of the two blues just to emphasize the ridge. And that could be all the sea froth and all the foam and you get all the sort of um how do you put it sort of sea foam and they create like sort of zigzags and there we go i'm just going to cover that up in the same tone now it's dry and what it should do is have a shadow tone and then when we put lighter tones over the top they can act as the highlight so if you think of there we go so look we've got the dark really dark and we're just going to really emphasize everything now. So I've just swapped over to a fine liner. So just a thin brush. And all I'm going to do is just outline everything. And just try and make everything a bit more prominent. Just a bit more 3D. So if you think what we're trying to do is we're trying to create shadows. So our highlights stand out more. So we need the dark of the, um, the dark deepest part of the wave in order for things like the light white and yellow to stand out more. So all I'm doing is using a really dark tone, which is indigo, which was black, blue, and a little bit of green, and a fine liner. I'm just trying to emphasize the waves in the background, just looks like they're coming towards the shore. So our beach, as I say, is just building it up. It's just taking your time. And just using dark tones just to emphasize highlights so look all i'm doing here i'm creating zigzags and this could be all the sea foam and all the water as it peels back but also the reason i'm darkening up this left hand corner is because i'm going to sign it here <laughs> so i'm literally darkening it up just so i get my credit 
and when I stick my funky signature there in that in that corner you can see it so again I need a dark tone for you to see my bright signature so think of that think of always laying the darks on first let them dry and then add to the highlights so just using some of that lighter blue I'm just going to create some texture in in the wet sand just so it looks a bit more 3d why not let's get some white uh, lots and lots of white and a little bit of pink just a tiny bit of pink more white than anything a little bit of blue it's a bit like when we created the underpainting it's that same tone so why not create some highlights just on our sea foam here so this is all the sort of wash as the um, wave comes up onto the beach and you get some really sharp highlights and you get sort of a um, sort of almost like a washing machine you get all this water sort of cascading together and you get all this foam bubble up so what we're trying to do is just create texture by using now we've got the dark color underneath that shadow tone we're going to use it brighter tones to curl around so look we're trying to curl around and emphasize that sort of tube effect of our waves so we're trying to create sort of a shimmer and sort of a ridge by having that dark really harsh border we can create brighter harsh highlights on the bottom and on that ridge to create the look of texture in our wave now with me a lot of the time people ask me do i have a reference photo to use as a um, comparison unfortunately i don't what i tend to do is i take photos everywhere i go of sunsets and i combine skies that i like so this could be a sky from say london and obviously we don't have a lovely gorgeous beach like here and i find waves so when i go on holiday um, my wife is from a gorgeous part of spain which is all islands and i take lots and lots of reference photos so look, all i'm doing here is i'm using white just to emphasize the highlights on the waves and to create a more of a shimmer effect yeah and all i do is combine photos so i take a sky from one photo and maybe a wave from the other because it's very hard to in real life to sometimes get something so picturesque where you get a perfect wave and a perfect sky so what you can do is what i do is basically take lots and lots of reference photos everywhere where you are and combine them and you can also once you get to sort of a level where you paint every day you can make up waves so this wave for example and this sky is just out of my imagination i can just literally do it from my imagination simply because i know how to paint a wave because i've done it so many times and that will come with experience as i say don't worry if you haven't got reference um, photos but if you want to you can always use reference photos and then just use the colors that we're using today just to match the photos that's an easy way to do it while you're learning so look all i'm doing is just using some of that indigo just to really emphasize the highlight um sorry the shadows just to darken that corner as i say because that's where i want to sign it <laughs> and just emphasize the top of the wave and some of these harsh sort of shadows as that water sort of beams up so our wave is starting to look really really good it's starting to look really 3d it's a great tutorial to learn how to do a wave so i'm just going to use my flat brush and i'm just going to darken this area where um i just edited it a little bit there i by actually stuck my hand in the middle of my wave and smeared all my lovely highlights <laughs> like a rookie like a total rookie so all i'm doing i'm sorry i won't be a second i'm just darkening up that ridge i'm just going to put my highlights back i was jamming out to some nipsey hustle on my uh, on my tracks i was listening to some music wasn't paying attention forgot it hadn't dried and I stuck my hand right in the middle of it so i won't be a minute i'm just darkening up this area just to emphasize it and i'm just going to put some highlights back on my ridge but i thought why not leave that in the footage because as i say i want you to sh show you like we all make mistakes as an artist there's nothing as bob ross would say happy accidents there's no such thing as a mistake it's all learning 
even people like myself do that all the time. The great one is when you um, start oil painting and you get oil painting on something expensive like a sofa or a carpet. That's a good one. <laughs> You'll go down well in someone's house when that happens. So yeah, with acrylics, the great thing is, is if you use a baby wipe, you can just get it off. They dry so quickly and they're easy just with water to get it off. So look, I'm just putting my highlights back on where I stuck my chubby hand on it. I'm just reapplying just some white and light blue just to emphasize the wash. And I'm just gonna emphasize this bit and I'm gonna do some squiggles just to create some sea foam. So these are all the zigzags that I was talking about. Now, if you create a warm gray, which is just orange and black, so orange and black, dab of blue, why not? So orange, black, and a dab of blue. And then if you just add a little bit of white, so orange, black, a dab of blue, and a little bit of white, you should get this lovely warm gray, okay? So it's this nice warm gray, because it's got orange in it. And then all we're gonna do is just paint this corner here. And again, we just wanna use a darker tone. That's why we've got this orangey warm gray simply to frame the composition. So we've got a dark corner in the left hand side, we're going to sign it. So we want a dark corner in the right hand side just to frame the composition and then you've got a nice sharp ridge between the wet sand and the um, the wave and the beach itself. Now all I'm doing while the painting is dry I'm just using my blender brush and some light blue and I'm just going right up to the horizon. I'm just trying to soften it. I'm just, just like we did with the um, the transitions, just when it's dry, I've got hardly any paint on the brush. I'm just almost like a crayon. I'm just going over the top and I'm just softening areas with that light blue. And I'm just, while it's dry, I'm just emphasizing things where I made my mistake. I'm just putting in some darker tones just to emphasize the ridge of our water as it peels back as it comes back towards the beach and it goes back into the ocean. So look, while I've got that dark tone, you can add some texture. So just a light blue, so blue and white, and we can create some zigzags to create the look of sea foam. So in that corner, all I'm gonna do is just create some zigzags just and just give it a nice ridge just to create some sea foam as it comes up onto the beach so look all i'm doing is just now we've got that dark shadow tone in that corner i'm just going to use that dark tone just to add some highlights over the top with a fine liner I'm just going to leave that corner for my signature and i'm just going to create the illusion of sea foam so you get all those sort of zigzags and froth I'm just going to use that lighter tone just to create an edge just so it looks like the water has a nice ridge to it and there we go so that's looking more realistic now just by adding five minutes <laughs> of fixing my mistake and then turning it into sea foam so that was the plan all along everyone <laughs> so look just adding some sea foam just using white and a little bit of blue just creating zigzags, just leaving still gaps in the underpainting so that yellow and white shines through to obviously create the highlights. And as I say, now it's dry, just fixing my mistake by just adding some white just to emphasize my highlights on my wave and just the ridges here, just so they stand out a little bit more. So as I say, it's just going back and forth if you want you can add a little bit of white to your highlights so all I'm going to do I'm just going to add a little bit of dark indigo here just to emphasize these waves and I'm just going to take this the tone that we had earlier which was a tiny bit of orange uh, so yellow and some pink just create this sort of warm tone and I'm just going to lighten up some of this area here and just make the transitions a bit nicer. So all I'm doing, just making these clouds a little bit more orangey. I think they were a bit too dark, so I'm just adding some white. So I'm just making them a little bit more 
textured and a bit more fluffy using my blender brush. So all I'm trying to do is just make the transitions just look a little bit softer, just so it's not so scruffy. And while I've got that tone, I've got barely any paint on my brush. I'm just going to create some little reflections on some of the caps of the waves. And that could be just the reflection of the color of those clouds. So all I'm doing is using hardly any paint. I'm just using some of that pinky tone, that orangey pink, just so it looks like there's a little bit of a reflection on the wet sand and on the caps of the waves just to match the light tone. I'm just going to get some blue and purple and I'm just going to create the curvage that I had earlier. <laughs> so look, we curve around, think of a tube, I'm going to curve around and I'm just going to get some bright white and I'm just going to emphasize this ridge just here and on the wet sand. So if you just think of the shimmer effect you get on wet sand because it's so shiny, all we're doing by just going right up to the edge with some bright white, we're just creating a nice ridge. Now we're just going to make some purple and white and pink. So purple, white and pink. And I'm just going to create some shadows. I'm just going to make these clouds look a bit more prominent. Just as they're getting cooler as they move towards the left, I'm just going to make them a little bit darker just so they stand out more. So I don't want them to be too harsh. I don't want them to be overbearing because it's a very pastel tutorial. It's a very pastel sunset but I'm just going to make them a little bit darker on the left hand side and what that does is it just makes the transition towards the light look a little bit nicer and also just make it look a bit more realistic because it's going to have darker tones as it moves away from the sun and gets cooler. So just making them a little bit more purple and just going around them it just emphasizes them and it takes two seconds just with a little fine liner. So all you want to do is just just create sort of the illusion of shadows going around your clouds. There we go. So that looks fantastic. So I've signed her in the bottom left hand corner. We've got this gorgeous wave that you've learned how to do. You've learned how to do a underpainting with a light effect and how to get cooler as you moved across from the warm tones into the cooler tones. You've learned how to put clouds and a wave on top to create realism and how to match the sky and all the tones with the light and then how to frame your composition by darkening the corners. So that was a really easy, fantastic tutorial of a sunset beach. I hope you've all enjoyed it. We have plenty of tutorials that should be coming up on the right hand side now. My name is Murray. I just want to say thank you so much for everyone liking and subscribing. If you haven't done so, please do so now and take care of yourself. See you soon. Bye. Bye.